What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're finally starting to plug more away at the Auto Union 1000 SP project. I've got the shop laid out a little bit more simply, pulled a few cars out, get some more space in here, uh, which is kind of what I needed to do every morning anyway to just clear up some space and it makes me more motivated to get to work and do some more things here in the shop and not just feel claustrophobic when I'm only working on the laser machine with commission work. So now that the Porsche giveaway is done and I'm still just working on logistics as to how to get the car to Arizona, to Aoife who won the giveaway, um, might drive it out there. We're not sure yet. We might, SEMA is on the list and I've driven from Phoenix to Las Vegas a few times. Um, so maybe, maybe we drive the 94S to Phoenix and then get to Vegas for SEMA right after that. I'm sure I'll let you guys know if we decide to drive that car cross country. But now that that's done and I can kind of lift that from the burners, back on a front burner is the beetle pan that's going underneath the Auto Union 1000 SP. So as most of you may already know, I shortened this pan by two inches right here at the pan head. We already shortened it to meet the wheelbase of the body of the 1000 SP. And next on the list, as you can obviously see, was doing floors. So last week, got some floor replacements in. I wasn't too concerned about buying the best one. So if you're an air-cooled guy, um, I didn't buy Wolfsburg West pans. I bought these from CIP1 in California, and I did buy the ones that had everything already welded to them. They've got the outriggers welded, the jack points welded, seat rails, battery clamp, um, all that stuff already on them, but I will end up cutting them off. I bought these ones because they were the cheapest ones and I didn't want to weld the outriggers on. I just kind of wanted something I could just mount to this pan, weld in, no problems, because we are going to be modifying them. Seat location isn't the same in the Auto Union, so the seat rails will go. Those will have to move back quite a ways. Battery location will probably have to get moved. I am also going to be reinforcing underneath the channel edges. And just like we did on the Beetle Pan that's under the BMW 700, I'm gonna run some one inch square stock underneath this um, to give it more rigidity out at the edge where I'm going to make my floor extensions to meet the sills inside the body since the body of the 1000 is much wider than the beetle pan. So that being said, bought the cheap ones and that's okay. This isn't going to be a tutorial on how to do floor pans in your Volkswagen Beetle because a beetle body isn't going back down over these. So I don't have to worry about all the body mounts lining up perfectly since I have to build floor extensions off of them. But what will correlate is how I'm gonna cut them out and how I need to fix them back to this chassis. So I'm excited about this. Hope you guys are too, that at least something is getting done on the 1000 SP project. It's a major step because the closer we get to getting the beetle pan done, the closer we get to actually fitting the body to it. So today we're doing floor pans. We're gonna get those welded in and then we'll be ready for the next step of suspension setup on this pan. So we'll get it down on some jack stands, uh, get the lift arms out of the way and we'll get these ones cut out and I'll show you guys what we're working with. All right, so we got it up on jack stands. I'll probably start on this side since there's not much to cut out. On the actual tunnel of the chassis itself, it has this little lip that the floors actually sit against and then get spot welded uh, to it. And nature has done most of the work on this side for me, but as you can see down here, uh, I still need to separate it. So a lot of guys will use a chisel. Um, I do have an air chisel, but I might just use a hammer and chisel just to kind of be tedious with it since this lip is pretty tender. Um, not tender, but it's just pitted and rusty. And so might go easy with a hammer and chisel to kind of separate it here. 
Um, it separates all the way up around here and the outrigger support that is technically two pieces. You can actually see where the floor metal kind of overlays the outrigger. Um, that has to get separated up here. That's all kind of tack welded and seam sealed there. So I'm gonna start on this side. Probably what I'll do first is I'll take my sawzall and I'll just cut a little farther out from that lip and just cut all this excess out first. And down here, this is kind of key, underneath right here where the spring plate and your torsion tube come together, there's a mount right there that is load bearing for this outrigger and floor pan. So you don't wanna cut through that either, and that's cast. And I actually don't know if both sides are intact. It looks like they are. Doesn't look like they've been repaired either. This is a 1959 pan, and I took the original body off of this, so this hadn't been messed with before. I think these are original floor pans, which is kind of crazy for a 59. Uh, but it had sat in the woods for a long time, and it was, it was pretty rotted. Body was just as bad as the pans. Uh, but luckily, the tunnel pan head and underneath are all still solid. Frame horns at the back here, everything's solid, so it gave me a good base to work with uh, to put the auto union over it. So this side has a little bit more work to do, but again, like this side, I'll just cut with the sawzall and get the bulk of the pan out. All right, well, it's the next day. Worked on a few other things here in the shop, but I've got the passenger side almost done. I've got most of the pan obviously stripped off. Still need to get underneath uh, this piece where the actual cast support is. Need to finish getting what's left of the outrigger hammered off and ground down, and then need to work on the lip where the spot welds are still in but then up here is where it gets kind of dicey you can see where it's gotten real rusty even the side of the tunnel is really pitted we even have a hole up here what i'm going to do especially since this isn't a restoration project is i'm going to get this down to the best flat surface i can without making it too paper thin and uh, just welding it where i can and then i'll use panel bond where I can't. So you can see here, I am just hammer and chiseling my way down. Hopefully this side will go much smoother because it's not as pitted or rusty all the way up. I think this side of the floor was much better. I can actually see the seam of the two. All right, well, working more on the back here. Um, got the back part of the outrigger flange cleaned up on both sides. But most importantly, I got these cast support dropouts uh, cleaned up and was able to save both of them without them breaking. They are cast 
and I've, I've heard about a lot of these breaking and actually seen people uh, make new ones and weld onto them. And they help support the outrigger at the outer part of the pan. Out here, there would be nothing else to basically um, hold the weight of the floor pan. So these are good, cleaned up. And because this is so rusty up here, um, I'm gonna combine plug welding and uh, panel bonding. So I went and got some 3M black panel bond because up here, that's what I'm gonna rely on most where I can't get a good plug weld. All right guys, so I got most of the flange cleaned up as best I can, went down the whole way. Um, obviously this side is just depressing, but that's where we'll use more panel bond than anything. This side is remarkably better than the passenger side. Even this mount here that the pan fits over is all intact. But let's get the floor pans on and let's see how well they fit. I know I need to trim passenger side. I haven't put the driver's side on yet. All right, so this is taking much longer than I wanted it to, but we have an issue with the outrigger support and that doesn't line up at all. The ear of the outrigger touches before it can sit on the flat part that gets welded. But even if it did, the back of the floor pan would be significantly lower than the front. I don't know what spec measurements are, but luckily since we're building something super custom, um, it doesn't really matter. And I've heard that you can find all the appropriate OEM measurements on the Samba. Um, I haven't seen those myself, but I've heard from a lot of my air-cooled Beetle friends that that's where you can find a lot of those measurements. Uh, I'm sure it's tedious measurements, so everything's back in its appropriate place because the Beetle body needs to be able to mount up to all these body mount holes all the way around. What I'm going to do now is I've, I've already notched the side of this ear so it can sit down a little bit lower, so it can sit to a comparable height as the front from the top of the tunnel down. Um, what I need to do now is I need to basically take a piece of angle iron and plug weld it to the underside of this and then weld it where I can to the cast mount that sticks out underneath from the torsion tube. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be load bearing and the best scenario about all this is I have to build floor extensions to the frame rails I'm going to build inside the body anyway. So this is going to receive another support once it reaches back here basically in the body. So although we haven't gotten to that stage yet, I wanna make sure that this is at least supported. All right, so I didn't film everything of getting this all set up, but I got my holes drilled and on the inside here, if I can do this one-handed, you'll see I've got a piece of angle iron clamped in there. And in this cavity is where this cast support is going to sit. All right, well, I got the angle iron plug welded in. Gonna test fit it once more. I already ground down a bit of the cast step mount, basically. I flattened it this way, took a little bit of a corner off here, and I think this should be good. I just need to make sure that that angle iron will fit down over this enough to where I can get a couple welds on it, but also that it fits tight here and all the way along the flange and still tight up in that corner. So I ran to Harbor Freight and bought a cheap hole puncher, a pneumatic hole puncher. Uh, it's got a flange tool on it as well. I believe this is a 732nd inch uh, hole puncher, which is just under quarter inch. And probably what I'll do is I'll go about every inch and a half for the plug welds.
All right, well, we've got some holes punched in the floor pan. All the way up, about every inch and a half. Cool little tool. Would have made <laughs> drilling those out far harder. So I think that was like 55 bucks at Harbor Freight. All right, so all the holes on all the floor pan sections are punched through and cleaned up just enough to get a plug weld down through there. After all of this, I'll end up sealing everything up. I'll use some panel bond, uh, some 3M panel bond where I need to, uh, but all this is gonna get sealed up anyway. Solid welded this up, and then I full welded up and around the outrigger support. All right guys, we are welded in and I got farther up than I thought I could. And actually a couple of these didn't get good penetration because just the tunnel flange was just a little bit too contaminated. And you can see where I stopped. Even this one didn't, this one broke free as well. Uh, so basically the last 18 inches or so, um, I'll end up using some panel bond. It's just too pitted and too dirty. Uh, I'd have to put a whole new flange on there. And honestly, I mean, Again, we're not putting a concourse restoration body over this pan. So to just keep moving, I'm getting everything to where it's secured and I can seal it up and that's gonna be good enough. So both pans are now welded on. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it up on the lift and we'll get underneath here and we'll weld it to the cast arms that come off of the torsion tube for the support on the back side of the outrigger. That'll be the last step to getting this thing welded up. I'll seal it and panel bond it at some other time. But for now, we'll have the floors on and we can work on building our frame around that for the auto union body. All right guys, well, that's pretty much wrapping up getting these four pans welded in. And as I mentioned, still some sealing left to do. Still need to figure out the left front corner of the passenger side between some panel bond and some sealant all the way around uh, and some paint first, obviously, to get all this bare metal covered up. But as I mentioned before, if you're doing this in a Volkswagen Beetle, don't follow my route. Um, go to the Samba. A lot of people have laid out to the particular measurements how to do this right and put your beetle body down over it. Um, that's a wealth of uh, knowledge there, lots of information uh, for free there. So for now, I'm glad that I got this done. This was the first big step on this beetle pan before we start really kind of working on pairing the two cars. Thank you guys so much for watching. We leave tomorrow morning at like 4.30 a.m. for Toronto, Canada for the LZ World Tour, the Toronto stop of that whole tour. Super excited to see you guys up there. This episode won't be live until the event's actually going on. So hopefully this will be up by Sunday. Huge thanks to everyone at Vibrant Performance for the invite. Tomorrow night is their uh, invite-only private event at Vibrant Performance. Super excited to see Jimmy, Adam, Grant, all my buddies um, who I don't see that often anymore. But I'm super excited to see all of you guys this weekend. Can't wait to get up into Toronto uh, for some nice autumn sweatshirt weather. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for all of your support. I'll see you in the next episode from Toronto, Canada.